were told that one day, the Raveni would return. That oceans of blood would be spilled. And humanity would become a forgotten relic. Others claimed false prophecy, but I felt it in my bones. Beyond the mountains, beyond the trees, beyond the light, they grew stronger in the shadows. And there will be a reckoning. of heroes is at its end. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Derek Neal. I'm the executive producer here at Maximum Games, and I'm excited today to be able to bring you this sneak peek into our upcoming action-adventure title, Extinction. What you're about to see is a small slice of one level, and uh, this is a very early pre-alpha build, so please expect some things to change between this and the final version. With that said, let's get started. Extinction takes place in a lush, vibrant fantasy world, full of painterly textures and bright, rich colors. But this world has come under siege by an organized army of massive otherworldly invaders known as the Raveni, who have begun systematically eradicating humanity off the face of the planet. You play as Avil, one of the last of the Sentinels, a legendary group of warriors with the skills and tools necessary in order to take down these massive foes. The gameplay in Extinction emphasizes high-speed traversal around the environment. In addition to the basic jump and double jump, Avil can also run horizontally along walls, run vertically straight up walls, air dash through the sky, come floating back down gently, can bounce off of springy objects in the environment such as building awnings or treetops, and can use his whip like a grappling hook to get around. When he does this, time slows down, giving him time to plan his next move and make split-second decisions. Of course, Avil's ultimate goal is to save as much of humanity as possible. He needs to protect them from the constant onslaught of the ogres and their minions. He does this by engaging them in real-time, skill-based combat. In addition to his series of regular strikes, he can also execute powerful AoEs, launch enemies into the sky, slam them back down to the ground, cancel his attacks into rune strikes for massive damage, and cancel his attacks into dodges in order to evade his opponent's strikes. Of course, the star of the show is Avil's combat with the ogres. Now, with their minions defeated, it's time for Avil to take on their master, one of the enormous Raveni who has been rampaging through the countryside, obliterating everything in our fully destructible environments. The ogres themselves are fully dismemberable, but they wear armor in order to protect themselves. In order to take this beast down, Avil must first destroy that armor. This is done via a powerful charged-up rune strike, once the armor is destroyed, Avil can then dismember the limb underneath. Dismembering limbs like this builds energy which Avil will need to ultimately be able to strike the finishing blow. And as you can see, this ogre is none too happy about the loss of its leg, and Avil has to dodge its attacks while also trying to remove the remaining armor in order to get to the limbs beneath them. This is an extremely dangerous situation to be in because if any of these blows actually manages to hit Avil, it will be death in a single hit. Having now absorbed enough power and weakened the ogre sufficiently, Avil is now ready to go ahead and strike the finishing blow. Using the traversal options we showed off earlier, Avil is able to climb up the ogre's back, take out its helmet, and deliver the coup de grace. That was a relatively easy fight against a relatively basic opponent, but not all enemies are so simple. Depending on what armor, weapons, and abilities they have, each ogre presents its own unique challenges, and requires different strategies and tactics to take down. Here, we have an example of an ogre decked out in gold armor. This armor does open up some new traversal options for Avil, but as you can see, it's also much harder to remove. Each piece is protected by multiple latches that must be destroyed in order to remove it. 
four of them on each leg piece, and two on each arm piece. Having finally destroyed all the latches, Avil is now able to dismember the first of this ogre's legs. Moving onto the arms, however, is now much more difficult, as they are constantly moving, making it hard to target those tiny latches. Avil must dodge the ogre's attacks and their minions' attacks while doing this. It has now taken sufficiently long to take down this ogre that its leg has regenerated, and it stood back up. But it no longer matters. Flush with energy from his last kill, Avil is ready. He climbs up the back of the ogre and is presented with one final challenge, staying up there long enough to take out its remaining armor. First, he removes the helmet, and then the collar. With these two obstacles out of the way and its neck exposed, Avil can finally go in for the kill. And so the second ogre falls. As I said before, this was just a short glimpse into some early pre-alpha gameplay, and there's much more to come. Go to Extinction.com to keep up with all the latest news and reveals, and I'll see you next time. They're not normal, they are 150 feet tall, uh, and they are absolutely hell-bent on destroying all of humanity, wow. wiping them off of the face of the planet. And they do so in an organized, systematic way. Yep. Um, they're accompanied by their minions, which as you can see here in the trailer, uh, are attacking people. And uh, you play as this guy, Avil, who is uh, the last of an ancient order known as the Sentinels, okay. who uh, are warriors that are equipped with the skills and the weapons and the talents necessary to be able to take down these, uh, these really hulking, enormous foes. Okay. Um, so this is a uh, trailer. Do we, are you showing gameplay at E3, or are we just saying the first look at it here? Yeah, so actually, uh, I'm excited to announce that today we have our first ever gameplay reveal for you here. Oh, cool. Uh, on uh, on YouTube Live at E3. Oh, we don't have to wait. I was like, so, we have to wait till later, but we're going to yeah. actually show gameplay here. We are. Time. We're actually going to show gameplay here. And okay. uh, one of the main things, one of the first reactions that people got from up, oh, here you go. So this is right. uh, now cutting to actual gameplay. Okay. One of the first reactions that we got from people seeing the trailer was, wow, the trailer's really cool. It looks awesome. But that's not really what the game is that's like. That's what I was right? going to I was about uh, to beat you up saying, like, where's the game? And, and just so, like that, it so happens. I'm excited to announce that that trailer is exactly what the game is like. Wow. You parkour through the cities. Uh -huh. You fight the monsters. You fight, dismember, and destroy the ogres. Everything is completely destructible, all of the environments. The gameplay emphasizes high-speed traversal through the environment. Yeah. You can run on and cling on everything, run horizontally, vertically along walls, along enemies, ogres, everything, bounce off of objects in the environment. Uh -huh. You can air dash through the sky, and yeah. he can use his whip like a grappling hook to pull himself around. Mm -hmm. Actually, when he does that, time slows down, giving him a chance to kind of plan his next move. Wow. Uh, so here you can see Avil fighting against some of the uh, ogre's minions in the... Uh, real-time skill-based combat that we've got. He has the ability to cancel his attacks into a variety of different kinds of moves, including launchers, back slams, AOE attacks, dodges, powerful rune strikes. And uh, actually, the combat in this game has been designed by uh, the guys at Iron Galaxy, who are famous for their work on fighting games, like Killer Instinct yep. and Street Fighter III Third Strike Online oh, wow, Edition 5. All right, so. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that we're really excited about is that when you're fighting these giant ogres, you are really fighting these giant ogres. The environments are completely destructible, and uh, so are the ogres. You can dismember them, you can destroy their armor. So this big ogre, I can even can you, I take off limbs, things yes, like that? Yes, absolutely, really? and you'll see some of that in just a second. You can climb all over him with all of those traversal options we showed earlier. So here you go, he's going to destroy this piece of armor, yep. and uh, now he's going to be going uh, for the leg here shortly. You'll see your first, uh, your first ogre dismemberment here. Okay. <laughs> as he falls down. But in a lot of games, when you fight giant monsters like this, you don't really get to fight them, right? Yeah. Instead, it's uh, more of an abstraction. So for example, they might have an HP bar. And then as you hack at their toe, their HP goes down, and then eventually they fall over dead. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're just uh, you're doing a quick time event or something, pressing buttons at certain cues to make predefined animations happen. That is not the case here. This is actual real-time skill-based combat against these guys. And the way that you know that you're winning the fight is you're actually destroying their armor, hacking them into bits, and ultimately trying to take them down. 
So here, uh, after taking off his arms so he can't really defend himself, we're going in for the kill strike, and we're going to see our first ogre decapitated. An ogre decapitation only. Yep. <laughs> V3. Look at that. Oh, wow. There's now, the uh, head. The head didn't fall down. It just disappeared. The head disappeared, and then the body fell down. OK. Now, uh, actually, this. Why can't uh, the head fall down? Uh, well, so actually, Avil absorbs the yes. bits of the ogre that he chops off okay. and turns them into his energy that he then uses to kill ah, other ogres. All right, so what you'll see is these parts of his arm uh, disintegrating, the head disintegrating, things like that, okay. as, he does, as he absorbs them into his rune blade. Okay. Uh, so yeah, what you're seeing here is a, is a different ogre with uh, some different skills and equipment. Can't and see I, no more. Uh, sorry? Ogre can't see no more. He's got uh, yeah, yeah. He's got uh, his eyes covered up by this helmet. Uh, and this one's actually wearing a collar, which has to separately be removed. You can see that okay. while you're fighting the ogres, you also have to contend with their minions, which uh, knock you down, try to take you off of them. And, uh, but this time, Avil's in a rush, so he's not able to protect himself, kill all the minions first. Right. So he's uh, going for the kill shot here. And you'll see uh, the second ogre drop and fall. Oh, wow. All right. And of course, in this game, two ogres is not the end of it. The ogre horde is endless and uh, keeps coming and coming, yeah. and uh, things are bleak for humanity. It's a veal's job to save as much as possible, mm -hmm. but the reason the game is titled Extinction is because the war is not going particularly well from humans. And so victory at the end is measured in how many lives you can save, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, this idea that maybe you could ever win and, and stop it. So um, as we go through this environment, uh, you know, how often are we going to see ogres? Like, is it all like the time. All the time, okay. Yeah, all the time. Uh, so the ogres are coming in hordes, different varieties and hordes with different weapons, armor, skill, things like that. Uh, Every one is its own unique challenge, requires different strategies and tactics to take down. Um, depending on exactly what the situation are, you may also be able to use parts of the environment to your advantage. Climb up tall buildings, launch yourself off of ramps, uh, take advantage of cranes and other moving objects in the environment to move yourself around dynamically in order yeah. to... Uh, evade their strikes. One thing I should mention is that this game is, like I said, the combat is very realistic, in which I mean if you get hit by one of these ogres, you're just dead. Mm -hmm. One hit and it's over, you die. We do have respawn, so the mission's not completely over. Right. But the way that you stop that is uh, you actually have the ability to slow down time when you're fighting against these ogres. So when you're using your whip, which functions as a grappling hook, or when yep. you're charging up your rune strikes, time slows down. And so you can actually see this ogre's coming in for this massive hammer blow and then you can dodge it, get out of the way. Wow. Um, now, as you sort of play through this environment, obviously there are these big battle moments. Uh, when you're not in battle against an ogre, mm -hmm. what does the combat look like against other? Uh, so the combat that's not against the ogres is against the ogre's minions. Okay. And so that's what we were showing off earlier. You yep. uh, have a whole bunch of different attacks that you can chain together in uh, all sorts of various ways. Um, but one of the main things that you're doing when you're not fighting either the ogres or their minions is saving people. Mm -hmm. So each of the levels is decked out with tons of refugees that are scattered throughout the level. And one of your objectives are to save as many of them as possible. And the ogres are going to keep coming, their minions are going to keep coming, and it's all a question of how many people you can get to safety. All right, well, it looks uh, really cool. Uh, you know, people love big scale combat. Legends speak of an unstoppable army. Wave after wave of merciless evil. Destroying kingdoms. Crushing armies. Laying waste to humanity. Centuries ago, this war was fought by an ancient order. Now, the threat has returned, and only one remains.
It is an annihilation. And this soldier is all that stands between humanity and extinction.